Dr. Michael Stein, thank you so very much. He's going to be talking about can reducing dietary salt alleviate lupus symptoms. So, so I'm a rheumatologist, but I've, I've always been interested in heart disease. And I never really thought much about salt in, when I was wearing my lupus hat. And when I was wearing my heart disease hat, I would tell all my patients with their high blood pressure, you know, don't eat too much salt, follow the American Heart Guidelines. And then I learned some things from a, a wonderful investigator called Jens Tietze, who's a co-investigator on this project, that really made me think very differently about salt. And so I'm going to tell you a little bit about, about um, what he discovered. And Dr. Tietze is, is a driven man, I think is the easiest way to describe him. So he did not believe anything he was taught by any of his teachers, and he still doesn't. And, and he's a nephrologist, and he was taught that when you eat salt every day, the amount of salt you eat comes out in your urine. So your body is always in perfect salt balance. And that's pretty much been the, the physiological teaching for, for decades. And you can imagine why that's true, because if it wasn't true, you'd swell up like a balloon. You know, you have to get rid of the salt because salt holds water, and if you don't get rid of the salt, you'll, you'll pop. You'll become a Michelin person and, and, and pop. And, and he said, you know, let, let's look at this carefully. No one's ever really tested this hypothesis. And he thought, where, where can I do this? How can I get people and feed them an exact amount of salt, sodium, and measure every drop of urine that comes out of them and, and measure this, this hypothesis? And he, he ended up testing spacemen who were training for a mission to Mars. So these were Russian spacemen, and they were locked in a capsule uh, just like they were going to go to Mars. They didn't go out for months. Every bit of food that went into the capsule, the exact contents was known. Every drop of everything that came out of the capsule was measured. So this was a very, very controlled uh, experiment. He made a deal with, I think it was the Russian government, where he supplied the food for the spacemen for six months or whatever it was. And in exchange, he could, he could do some of these scientific experiments. So this is, this is some of the data just from, from one person, but it represents what happens uh, in, in all of them. And the black line over here really represents the, the line of zero, where that's the diet that the person's taking in, and it's just a constant diet. So there's no variability in the sodium in, in the person's diet. The, the red dots and the red lines represent the amount of sodium coming out in the urine each day over this period of time. And you can see if everything was in balance, those lines would overlap completely. But they're not in balance. What happens is that there's a rhythm of, of salt where sometimes it's too high and sometimes it's too low. And those amounts, you might think 100 uh, um, millimoles is not a whole lot of sodium, but that's often all that a person would eat in a day. So, so that's a fair amount of sodium. He didn't really understand this, but he, he, he thought about it some. And he, he asked the question, well, you know, if, if the body's holding on to sodium, it must be somewhere. It can't be floating around in the ether. It must be somewhere in the body. So what he did was he took animals and he fed them sodium and then he, he burnt them. So he dissected them up and he burnt different parts of the, the animal to see where the sodium was. And he found out that most of the sodium was in the skin or in the muscle. And then he said, well, you know, I like to work with humans and I can't burn humans to find out where, where, the, where the sodium is, but I can measure sodium in humans. So he developed an MRI technique, which is the same sort of MRI that, that some of you might have seen or had, or had um, relatives uh, go through, but it uses a sodium sensor rather than the usual kind of uh, sensor used in the, in, the, in the MRI. And what he did was he put, this, uh, he put people into the sodium MRI and he found out that the sodium shown here in white is really just below the skin, just as he'd found in the animals. These, these little tubes here are tubes of salt water, just with different concentrations, increasing concentrations. More salt equals more white. So that's used to, to grade the amount of sodium in the MRI. There's two scans here. The one on the left is a, is a young person who did not have high blood pressure. The one on the right is an older person who did have high blood pressure. And it's really to summarize some of his data, which suggests that as we age, we tend to get more sodium in our tissues. We hold on to sodium. And also, if we have high blood pressure, we tend to hold on to sodium in the tissues.
So he, he then, he's such a clever guy, he said, well, I don't really understand this, and, and you know, somehow we were made to have sodium in the skin, and, and what's it doing there? Um, and to summarize a whole lot of experiments that he did, he figured out that the sodium there is acting to activate the immune system. So it's actually a barrier to stop your skin getting infected by bacteria. And this is a scan of a, of a man who had an infection in his one leg, and you can see the massive amount of sodium in white there. And his other uninfected leg on, on the other side has virtually no sodium in it at all. And so what turns out was that the sodium that's in the skin not only has beneficial effects on the immune system where it stimulates the body to fight infection, but unfortunately it also appears to have detrimental effects on the immune system. And he showed this in an animal model of autoimmune disease which is called the EAE model, Experimental Autoimmune Encephalitis. I have trouble saying it, I can't, I can't remember it. But it's an it's a autoimmune disease which is similar to multiple sclerosis and is a well-used model of, of autoimmune disease. And basically they fed uh, the animals either a high-salt diet or a low-salt diet. And you can see that the, the, uh, the animals on the low-salt or the control diet did pretty well and those on the high-salt diet uh, got, got worse disease. So this suggested that the, the high sodium intake was exacerbating autoimmune disease. There are another couple of models that have also shown this, including an arthritis model. So he, these are some of the studies he did showing that the high skin sodium is associated with high blood pressure. This is women with high blood pressure on, on this side here in the red. This is their skin sodium on the MRI. And you can see the women in, in red have a higher skin sodium than control women who have normal blood pressure. And if you just take all men and women and you plot the height of their blood pressure against the amount of skin sodium, the higher your skin sodium, the higher your blood pressure tends to be. So as a rheumatologist, I put on my rheumatologist hat and thought, well, you know, patients with lupus have increased cardiovascular disease. Uh, Dr. Tsitsi is telling me that perhaps salt uh, has something to do with exacerbation of autoimmune disease in animals. Uh, perhaps we can study uh, uh, this in patients with lupus. And the reason we became interested in, in cardiovascular disease is some very old data. And this shows the coronary calcium, which is a scan of the heart looking at the amount of atherosclerosis. And it was one of the first studies that showed in young women with lupus, there's much more coronary calcium at every age group Patients in lupus are in the dark bars, the controls are in the light bars, and these are the age groups uh, on the bottom. So we started to think, well, perhaps we could test some of these uh, ideas in, in patients, and we went to the literature and said, well, look, what do we know about salt in, in lupus? And um, there, there was that. There's absolutely no, no information whatsoever. Uh, <laughs> in patients with lupus, not even how much they eat. Uh, we looked at our cohort of patients that we have and did a very crude estimate of their sodium intake. And it's about the same as the, as the rest of the US population. It was about 10 grams a day, which is, which is more, much more than is recommended for, for all of us. So we, we, we're asking two questions in this, uh, in this project that's funded by the Lupus Research Institute. The first one is a very simple one. We're just going to measure the skin sodium by MRI in patients with lupus and in matched controls and ask whether the skin sodium is higher in patients with lupus or not. And our second question is we're going to ask whether a change in the sodium diet will affect the skin sodium and will also affect inflammation and blood pressure in patients with lupus. So high blood pressure is, is a very common problem in patients with lupus. And uh, it's therefore important to know what the salt diet does to that. These are some of the things we're doing. So we're measuring the sodium MRI. We're going to measure some of the inflammatory markers. We're going to measure blood pressure and some other kind of fancy blood vessel tests. And then we're going to apply those to, to the two questions we're, we're asking. Uh, each diet, the high salt and low salt, will be for about four weeks with a washout of four weeks in between. And this is just an example of the 24-hour blood pressure. If any of you have ever had it done, it's kind of quite exciting. Uh, I've worn one of these. It's kind of fun to see your, see your tracing. But you can get a tremendous amount of information over 24 hours in terms of what's happening to the blood pressure. One of the things we're particularly interested in is blood pressure at night. Most of us drop our blood pressure at night. Some of us don't. 
And if you don't drop your blood pressure at night, uh, it tends to have a worse outcome in terms of cardiovascular disease. So that's something we're, we're going to be looking at as well. So I'm going to stop there and, and, st and stop and just summarize quickly. So Dr. Tsitsi showed animal models increased sodium stores can drive autoimmune disease. Uh, he showed that in humans you can measure sodium stores by the sodium MRI. And he showed that there's increased skin sodium uh, is associated with high blood pressure and inflammation. And we're going to uh, bring you some data in about 18 months that will give you some of the answers to all of the questions I'm sure you want to ask. Thank you. <laughs>